I was in Parliament from 1990 to 2010 uh, when I retired, and when in Parliament uh, with Andrew, uh, was uh, active in various ways available to parliamentarians of promoting the issue uh, of the marbles. And when I retired in 1990, I was asked if I could carry on this work as chairman of the British Committee. Uh, first thing I thought I uh, needed to do was to review the nature of the beast that I was uh, becoming chairman of, uh, what it does, where it was going. And Mr. Sandys, uh, was, uh, the ambassador, was very helpful, and he, he offered to host a lunch where I could call together uh, key members uh, of the British Committee and of Marbles Reunited. And I welcome Angelos Ekinomu at the back, who is the on Honourable Secretary of uh, Marbles Reunited and, uh, and gives them uh, great support. Who are Marbles Reunited? Well, there are two organisations in the UK which causes some confusion. The British Committee has been around since uh, 1983. Uh, Marbles Reunited is a, a more recent organization. When the Olympics were held in Athens in 2004, there was a new organization uh, formed called Parthenon 2004, trying, as we were all doing, to get the momentum of the Olympics in Athens to promote the return of the marbles just as we are using the momentum of the Olympics in London uh, to similar effect uh, with this uh, colloquy. Uh, and um, it sometimes causes confusion. And it can sometimes uh, be duplicative, wastefully duplicative, to have two organizations. Uh, and so uh, the first thing, uh, I thought we must do something about that. Uh, I have my own connection with Marbles Reunited. I was the first chairman when I was in Parliament, but at that time I was a delegate to the Council of Europe, which meant I spent a lot of my time in Paris and Berlin and Brussels and places like that, and could never attend their meetings, though I was the chairman. So we had a new chairman, uh, and I became the honorary president. So I straddle both organizations which is quite a useful thing. And the, the uh, first thing uh, uh, I thought, we must do something about uh, this. So at the lunch, uh, we had a, a good discussion about where we are and where we're going. And three main things came out of that uh, discussion, which I've been working to ever since. Uh, the first that we should try to form a common front between the BCRPM and Marbles Reunited. Uh, the second uh, was that uh, we should establish that there has to be a strong axis between London and Athens because it's inevitable that if anything is going to have to uh, happen, it's going to have to be along that axis. Initiatives from Athens, responses from London. And so uh, whatever else happens worldwide, that strong axis uh, has to be there. And the, the third thing was a review of the international relations of our British organization. Well, the common front I think, Angelos, we're, we're working on. We, we, we had a meeting uh, last week uh, of uh, Marbles Reunited, and uh, there was a formal adoption of a memorandum of understanding between us that we are two organizations, but we, as much as possible, try to operate joined at the hip. Uh, we may uh, conduct our own activities, but we share information and we support, we support each other in each other's 
activities. And we want that to be the way forward. Uh, with regard uh, to the London Athens axis, that's difficult at the moment. Uh, it's, it's very difficult uh, to form relations uh, with Athens because of the situation in Athens. And Alina would know more about this uh, than, uh, than me. But there, there, is, there isn't a firm base on which one can rest another foot uh, in, in, in Athens at the moment. But clearly, it's essential that that should, that that should be. And I'd rather not say any more about the, uh, the contacts at the moment which we're uh, trying to establish. And the third thing, the review of international relations, this colloquy comes out of that. And I cannot express enough my gratitude to Michael uh, uh, and uh, Emmanuel and Dennis Twitaris, who was mentioned, who has been very, very helpful in the organization of this colloquy and is responsible for the graphics uh, in this uh, rather nice program. He produced this for uh, that nice frontispiece, uh, uh, for example. Uh, and and um, from this colloquy, you'll see from the program, uh, the, uh, the session after tea, uh, taking stock. Um, we hope coming from uh, this uh, will be the review I was talking about of the current state of the campaign, uh, options for the future, um, planning the, a coherent global campaign uh, along uh, the lines that Michael perhaps was talking about. And importantly, in this modern world, how to coordinate information technology to maximum and optimum material. But that is clearly the way forward, the various forms of uh, um, uh, electronic communication that are available and are developing, we must use uh, to the maximum. There's one thing I wish to stress about the, uh, the stance of the uh, British Committee, and that is we are very ascetic. We are the campaign for the reunification of the Parthenon marbles. <coughs> we do not involve ourselves with general campaigns for restitution of cultural objects. It's not that we may not be sympathetic, but we think simply of our campaign. And there is one simple reason for this. Um, most of the traditional arguments of the British Museum and its supporters uh, for the retention of the marbles in the British Museum have been abandoned. And in an article I wrote recently, I described them as historical curiosities, discredited variously as inconsequential, disingenuous, debatable, statistically dubious, or just plain wrong. And to their credit, perhaps, but to their common sense, rather, perhaps the British Museum has recognized that many of these traditional arguments about deliberately not spending time on them uh, uh, don't wash anymore. But there is one which does resonate with the public, and that's the floodgates argument, that if you concede to the demand for the reunification of the Parthenon marbles, then this will open the floodgates for a, a flood of further demands for restitution, which would have the effect of emptying the galleries of all our museums. Now, it's a specious argument, actually. It's extremely exaggerated. Where there is evidence, uh, the, the, it, it doesn't show 
that restitution of cultural objects uh, does lead to a flood of further demands. But the relevance to the Parthenon marbles is we wish to immunize our campaign against the floodgates argument because people do swallow it by saying that the argument for the Parthenon marbles is unique. The Parthenon and the Acropolis are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Parthenon is a fixed monument on that UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's possibly the most iconic and recognizable of all UNESCO World Heritage Sites. UNESCO uses it as an icon itself, an emblem itself. And the Parthenon marbles are not just additional adornments to this fixed monument. They're integral components of it, and they were chopped off, sawn off uh, by Lord Elgin at the end of the 18th century and brought to Athens. I'm talking of those in the Elgin collection. The onus has to be the onus of justification has to be on those who don't support the reunification of this great monument. And if the marbles were brought together with the other halves, and in some cases, as this informed audience would know, they are other halves, pieces of the same block, half in Athens, half in London. Uh, this would not open any floodgates because there cannot be any similar examples of a UNESCO World Heritage Fixed Monument so defaced and so unreunified. Therefore, to reunify the marbles would not open any floodgates because there's not a lot of precedent which it could set. That's why uh, I'm taking a long time to stress that the British Committee, whilst it acknowledges general campaigns for restitution, is very limited and ascetic in its demand for the reunification of the sculptures which belong to the Parthenon. And when people say, and I had this argument recently over dinner uh, with an art critic, what's the point? The Parthenon can't be restored again. They can't, they can't put it all back together and, and put those in the Acropolis Museum and those in the British Museum on the Parthenon. I say, I say no, but think on this. The Parthenon Gallery in the Acropolis Museum is the one place on earth where it is possible to have a single visual and aesthetic experience simultaneously of the Parthenon and its sculptures. And many people here will have had this experience I've had. You can sit and you can look at all three elements, metops, pediments, frieze, and see the Parthenon in the background as well. That's the best you'll ever get, and there's only one place on earth where that can happen. Um, more recently, in the UK, there's been interest in the difficult economic situation in Greece. And this has given rise to uh, a proposal that the marbles from the British Museum could be returned to Athens as a gesture to the beleaguered Greeks. It would raise morale because despite uh, the difficulties in Greece, you scratch the surface of any Greek very, very gently, 
and you'll find this visceral concern about this outrage of half of the surviving sculptures being in the British Museum. To return them at this point in time would be a gesture which would raise the morale of Greeks, uh, which we all know they need at this time. And also, it could give in, in its, own, its own way an economic boost to their tourist industry. And as a case for that, the current chairman uh, of Marbles Reunited, uh, Andrew George, who is an MP, actually put this uh, to the Prime Minister at Prime Minister's Question Times about six months ago. Exactly what I've just said. And the response of Mr. Cameron was, we're not about to lose our marbles, which I find both banal and dismissive. But we have uh, a national treasure in the UK. He doesn't like to be uh, described as a national treasure. Stephen Fry, uh, a television personality, who, when Christopher Hitchens uh, died, and a tribute to Christopher Hitchens is later on our program, a great supporter. By the way, we have a number of copies of Christopher Hitchens' book on the Parthenon sculptures at the back. And so we thought we'd make them available to those that might wish to take one uh, away. A limited number, but uh, there are uh, some there. Stephen Fry, who was a great friend of Christopher Hitchens, made a modest proposal that we recognize our debt to Greece by making this gesture, which I've just described. And last week, that developed into a debate. Uh, Intelligence Squared is an organization. <clears throat> they're globally organized. They're uh, centered in the UK. Um, with Stephen Fry leading and uh, Andrew George supporting him. Uh, they, they had a debate on the reunification of the marbles and the outcome of that debate uh, was 384 people in the audience supported the return and 125 opposed it. That's a 75% uh, more or less. Um, it's interesting that at the same time, the Journal of the Museums Association, this is a professional journal in this country, on the back of an article which I wrote for them in, in connection with this colloquy, uh, is currently conducting uh, an, an opinion poll. And this, it's more professional opinion than public opinion. But interestingly, there's similar, currently, similar returns there too. In other words, we can see that there is tremendous support uh, when people know about the situation, and, that, and that's the problem. And obviously, my, uh, Michael and Emmanuel are doing a tremendous job uh, in their parts of the world. We, we, we try to do the same as well. If we can inform and educate different constituencies of public opinion uh, about the case for the reunification of the Parthenon marbles, we know from experience that more and more people will come out and say yes. And this is leading into uh, Andrew's uh, uh, the presentation, which is coming up very, very, very soon. Um, the British Museum say we can't divest ourselves of these monuments because it's against the law. Of course, the law could be changed, and I'll say no more about that uh, at the moment because Andrew is going to tell us much more about it. But um, parliamentarians ultimately represent the public. And the more we can demonstrate that public opinion is growing in favor 
of the return of the marbles, the more the pressure is on the government to respond to the public mood. We're not there yet, but we, we get there. Andrew and I were very active in Parliament. Uh, on, 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 on the back of, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll close on, on this, on, on, on the back of what's been happening, I, I thought that um, it's interesting that three things are happening at the same time. Uh, the Intelligence Squared debate, uh, the Museums Association interest, this colloquy, which has attracted significant attention, three significant banks all around the same thing. And I, I, I thought that um, if one could get notice taken of this in Parliament, it brings the three significant banks together into a bigger bang. So I have drafted, uh, and we, we call it an early day motion uh, for the House. It goes on the order paper, and it attracts attention uh, because uh, the order paper of the House of Commons is widely read. It's an influential uh, document. I can't put this down, uh, but I hope that we can persuade a member of parliament uh, to put it down. Uh, Forgive the language of this, the, the, we call them EDMs, and there's EDM speak that these motions have to be written in. That this House notes the Intelligence Squared debate on the Parthenon marbles, uh, in which the audience voted by a margin of 75% in favor of re reunifying those marbles held in the British Museum with literally their other halves in Athens is mindful that this debate will be streamed and broadcast to an audience of 70 million worldwide, notes further that the international, the international colloquy to be held, uh, well, being held on, uh, on the same subject by the BCRPM and its uh, American and Australian partner organizations, uh, which will be attended and addressed by representatives from four continents, is mindful that the proceedings of this colloquy will also be streamed to a global audience. Notes finally the opinion poll, which I've just mentioned, uh, is aware that the British Museum has abandoned most of the traditional arguments for uh, retention, which I described uh, just now. Uh, congratulates the campaigning, campaigning organizations, Marbles Reunited, uh, and the British Committee for the Unification of the Parthenon Marbles on this vindication of their work and calls upon Her Majesty's Government to take heed of these strikingly similar measures of domestic, public, and professional opinion and worldwide interest by initiating a review of the cultural and ethical justifications for failing to reunite those sculptures of the Parthenon held in the British Museum with those now displayed in the new purpose-built Acropolis Museum in Athens. Um, and that tries to bring it all together. And note uh, what I'm saying, and uh, Tom Flynn will be having uh, more to say about this uh, uh, later. Um, ultimately, the best foundation for the return of these marbles uh, have to be cultural and ethical arguments. Um, we, we may, we may, it's possible that one could um, win the legal case. It's high risk. Um, but to me, that would be a hollow victory because I want to see the marbles of the Parthenon reunited, not because of some legal argument, but because culturally and ethically, this is the right thing to do. Thank you.